This is one of multiple videos discussing software-defined networking, network programmability, and network automation. In this video, we're going to discuss Mininet. I'm gonna show you how you can download Mininet, integrate it with GNS3, and build OpenFlow networks using Mininet. Now that we've got Mininet running, it's time to integrate Mininet with a controller. In this example, I'm using an Ubuntu Docker container in GNS3, and I'm gonna install Open Daylight on that container. Under Menu, use ODL on the Open Daylight website. There are links to download the latest release of Open Daylight. At the time of this recording, the latest release is Boron SR3. So the link that I'm using for downloading is simply this link that I've copied from the website. Now, if you've watched my other videos where I show you how to install Open Daylight, then jump ahead. All I'm gonna do now is test connectivity to the internet and then install Open Daylight on this container. The NAT cloud allocates IP addresses automatically. And what you need to do on your Ubuntu client is edit the config and uncomment these two lines. So what you would do is power off your Ubuntu container, right click on it, edit the config, remove the comments from these two lines, save it, and then start it up and then open up a console to the container. Docker containers boot up very quickly. So notice again, I can ping google.com. So what I'm gonna do now is use the command apt-get update to update references. So I used apt-get update to update the references on the container. And what I'm gonna do now is install Java I've listed these commands below this video so that you can follow what I've done. There's been a lot of questions about Docker containers. When you install software like this and you shut down your Docker containers, the software is lost. That is normal for a Docker container. You need to build your own Docker container if you want persistency or run open daylight in a virtual machine. I'm gonna to set to the Java home and install wget. And then I'm going to download Open Daylight from the Open Daylight website. Once again, that's using this link here. So that will simply download Open Daylight. That may take a while, depending on your internet speed. I'm gonna pause the video at this point and I'll resume it once the download is completed. As you can see here, the download has almost completed, and there you go. So Alice shows us that the zip file is downloaded, so I'm gonna unzip that file. And to do that, I need to install unzip. So now I can unzip the zip file. I'll then move to that directory and then run the command bin caraf to start up open daylight. So open daylight has started, but I need to start up various features on open daylight, such as ODL rest conf, ODL layer two switch, which is the most important one for this demo and some other options. So those are now booting up. Now something to remember, when you start up your Docker container initially, you're gonna to wanna to know what the IP address is for the Docker container. So right in the beginning, when my Ubuntu Docker container started up, it was allocated this IP address. 
So in Mininet, I should be able to ping that IP address, which I can. So the Mininet device is using this IP address here and the controller is 186 and Mininet can ping that controller. Now it takes a while for ODL to boot up, but as you can see, it's now installed all the features. IP address of the controller is once again this IP address. I should be able to browse to the ODL controller. Port 8181 forward slash index.html. And as you can see, we are viewing an ODL login prompt. Username is admin, password is admin, and I can now log in. So we've got ODL running. We've got Mininet running. So what we could do now is start up a Mininet topology, but point it to a remote controller with IP address 192.168.122.186.1. And we should be able to do a ping all. As you can see here, ODL has learnt about that one switch. So my controller is not doing very well here. What I would suggest you do is shut everything down, run it again. If necessary, run a different version of Open Daylight. So if you have a problem with your Open Daylight controller, choose an older release of ODL and see if that works better. Okay, so I rebooted everything and it looks a lot better. So what I'm gonna do now is rerun the command. I'm using sudo mn. I'm pointing it to the controller. When I rebooted, the controller's IP address changed, so now it's 42. In this example, I'm gonna specify that the switch uses OpenFlow 1.3 when communicating with the controller. Be very careful with this command. It's hyphen hyphen or dash dash switch equals OVS K comma protocols equals OpenFlow 1.3. Note these are uppercase entries. I'm gonna use simple to read MAC addresses and I'm gonna set up a topology of four switches back to back. Ping all will hopefully work. Notice the pings are a lot better than previously. Only 8% drop, 100% success now. So click reload, we can see the new topology. We've got four OpenFlow switches and four PCs one PC connected to each OpenFlow switch in this topology. Now using the Firefox client doesn't give you a big GUI interface. If you want a bigger GUI interface, you could bring a Windows VM into this topology as an example. So that's an example of a linear topology. What I'll do now is change this to 10 switches and then do a ping all between the switches. I'll refresh the open daylight interface. So notice now we have 10 switches in a back-to-back -back fashion. Each switch has a PC connected to it. So there's PC1 connected to switch one as an example. Here is PC5 connected to switch five. And I could zoom out to see the picture. So let's do something ridiculous. Let's make it a hundred switches. This is the power of Mininet. It allows you to create topologies very, very quickly. So we've got a hundred OpenFlow switches starting up. I'll click reload on the controller. You can see at the moment that it's still learning the links between the switches. 
and I think at this point I've got the controller struggling. Host 1 can ping host 2, host 2 can ping host 3. So let's do a ping all. Notice it took it a while, but there's the topology. Ping all. Host 1 can ping all other devices in the topology. We'll click reload on the ODL GUI. Now it is struggling, but after a while, I can see the topology, but the interface through Firefox isn't very good. But zooming in, you can see that there are PCs connected to every switch in the topology. So what I'll do actually at this point is bring a Windows PC into the topology. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.